Hey guys, Kaylee here, and welcome back to the Honeystead. There are a couple of hives that were not queen right, and with everything going on, I knew it was gonna be difficult for me to go out and try to find a mated queen. So I'm gonna show you what we did to help the colonies actually rear their own queen with the resources that I had. Let's go get into some hives. So I went ahead and threw my suit on. These girls are definitely active, and I wanna show you my extremely elaborate system that I use for me to be able to identify if my colony is needing some queen assistance. And it is a very, very elaborate handy dandy brick that I use. So my marking system, I have a few colonies that needed to, that were not queen right. So what I did is I actually took a brick and when I know that my colonies are not queen right, I just turn it this way and face it. Now that's not all that I do. I keep notes on me, but for me to just a quick visual, like I know these colonies weren't queen right, so a brick works great. So sophisticated, right? <laughs> This colony we split a while ago, they created a queen. However, when I checked again to see if she had returned home from her mating flight, there was no sign of her. We gave it a little bit longer, still no sign. And I had a frame of just a brand new egg from another colony that we just took and gave it to them in hopes that they'll create their own queen. When it comes to a colony, rearing their brood, whether it's a drone, a worker bee brood, or a queen brood, there are different stages and ages and how long it takes. The development of an egg to form into a queen bee is about 15 to 16 days, compared to a worker bee, which is about 21 days. Now the drones take the longest, they're about 24 days for them to form into a drone and emerge from their cell. Since I did this about a week ago, I'm hoping to see really nice queen cells. Let's go in and see what we can find. So let's go peek in and see what these girls are up to. So when you're doing something like this and you're introducing a frame into a colony that is queenless, you wanna actually think about where to place it. Now, you wouldn't place it on the ends of the colony. What you're gonna wanna do is mimic where the brood is. This one's a honey super, and we did not place the frame of eggs in the honey super. So I'm gonna take the top off and I'm going to try to remember which one I placed it in, but I know I would have mimicked exactly what a colony would do and that is your brood is typically in the center region of the colony. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this whole honey super off and not even worry about it. So center of the colony, which is gonna be about this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the ones on the end. Now, as you can see, I mean, this colony is booming. Like it's definitely a very strong colony. It just doesn't have any, doesn't have a queen. Look at all that. See all that pollen? All the different shades of pollen. It's really cool. Look at that. <laughs> I 
More pollen, waggle dance, and you can tell that you can tell that a colony also doesn't have a queen because if you look, you don't see any new young bees. You see a lot of older, older worker bees. Some young fuzzies, mainly because I actually did, when I gave them a frame, I gave them a frame of brand new egg and one or two of, of, the, of this frame actually had um, an egg already in a queen cup that I took from another colony that was getting ready to show signs of swarming. And there we go. So this is a good sign. They went ahead and started capping all of this brood, which these are all going to be good worker bees. So that means that they definitely were very, very happy to take a frame of brood and turn it into their own. So if you look right here on the bottom, those are now pretty good looking peanuts. So we've got one, two, looks like, one, two, up, three, four, five, looks like five that I can tell, which isn't too bad, you know, they're at least they're taking to them and we have about a week we have about a week until these girls can emerge now I'm going to go ahead and let them figure it out I'm not going to destroy any of them there's only five the first queen that is going to emerge is typically going to go around and she's going to find the other queen cells and she's going to go ahead and take care of them can you guys see this little drone He's like, I'm coming out. What I've learned is if you are ever unsure of how old a, a queen cell is, the darker the queen cell typically means that it's getting closer to, to the queen for emerging. If you're looking at the, if you're looking at it and it looks like brand new, very light colored um, wax on the end, on the tip, that means they pretty much just capped it. So now I know, like I said, I did this about a week ago. So in about a week, I'll come back out and kind of give a, get a good check to see what's happening if they emerged. And then after that, and then we wait for her to go and do a flight, which is her, her mating flight. And then she'll come back and hopefully she'll start laying, come on little buddy, you're trying so hard. I think he's, he's a big boy. <laughs> he's trying. So I'm feeling definitely happy about this. And we'll put this right back in the center where they belong. And then I'll go ahead and, and shut this colony up and check it in about a week. And then after that, check it again. Okay, so a few of our colonies that we did that with, I gave them a good check and I did notice queen cells on all of them.
frames might not have been perfect, but that colony was getting ready to swarm. And so instead of letting them swarm, I went ahead and put those frames in the colonies that needed it. They might not have been the best frames, but you know what? Sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And by splitting up those frames that had those queen cells on it, I actually saved four colonies without having to go spend money and try to find a mated queen in our area, which right now with everything going on is not exactly the easiest. My hopes with the next season is to really dive into this queen rearing and actually learn more about doing that. And I'll definitely take you guys along with us. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this later in the season. And one of the main reasons why we did decide to do it is because a lot of my colonies are already very developed, but we just didn't have a queen. The drawn out comb is there. They've got pollen, they've got nectar, they've got capped honey. They just did not have a queen. And those girls were definitely excited to have a frame of some brand new egg and, and the eggs were already in queen cells. So it was easy for them to finish the job and create their own queen. Thank you guys for watching and as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old.